If you've clicked on this video, there's one of two reasons. Either you're a subscriber, thank you very much, and you just watch my videos, and that's wonderful. And I know I'm late today, we'll get on to that. The other reason is, um, well, you saw this and you know kind of what you're looking at. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with the hobby, let's talk about what a Harlequin Space Galleon is, because that's what I'm calling this. If you're unfamiliar with Games Workshop, it's a company that does tabletop war games, and they've been around since, I think, the very late 70s, although they became more well-known in the late 80s and early 90s with Warhammer 40,000. Before then, it was Rogue Trader, which was a little bit niche, but as you got into the 90s, Games Workshop had a high street presence with stores, and they still do, which is remarkable for a company of its sort. And they're a, a worldwide company based in Nottingham in the UK. I've been a painter and player since, well, the late 90s? Certainly since secondary school, so we're talking 95-ish, I think. Second edition Warhammer 40,000 is kind of what got me into the hobby properly. I'd had a go with fantasy, as it was then, and, I don't know, it didn't quite grab me in the same way. I've stuck with the hobby ever since, and I'm not much of a player. I, I can play, I get some enjoyment out of it, but I get a lot more enjoyment out of building the models, painting the models, and doing ridiculous kit bashes like this thing. So that's a little bit of potted history as to what this is for. Rules-wise, I have no idea whether or not I can play this thing. I could potentially field it as a Cobra, which is a, a kind of heavy Eldar tank. I could field it as a Fire Prism, because that's the main weapon here. I could field it as a Wave Serpent, because that's what I've used to extend the back. But, I don't know. I'm just going to refer to it as a Harlequin Space Galleon because I wanted to build something showy, excessive, and I wanted to use up a couple of kits that I got that I couldn't make what either of the kits were into one thing. So this is just sort of using up a lot of leftover bits and pieces. I've got bits of other models in here as well. The banner poles up here are from the Dark Eldar range. The antenna there and this fan piece, they're both from the much smaller scale um, Epic game range, which was very, very brief. Uh, it was called something else before it was called Epic. I'll put that on the screen if I can find out. But uh, these are from Titans, which are massive things, like a Titan foot, if it was in this scale, would be about the same size as this model. But this is from the much, much smaller scale range. But the style of them's right, and they've been in my bits box for a long time. They just fit what I'm doing. Now, the reason I'm showing you this... Now, the reason I'm showing you this is there's been a couple of requests from people for seeing more of my miniatures stuff. And this project... I think might be a, a short series of infrequent videos because the amount of labour that goes into a project like this is ridiculous. I would estimate to finish this to the standard I want with the paint scheme I want, I'm looking probably around about the 30 hour mark. And it's something where you sort of, you do a couple of hours and then you go away and do something else. To give you an idea of what this is made of, let me show you some finished ones. So this one is a wave serpent, it's a troop transport, so you have the extension where this wiggly line is here, that extension in a larger capacity here. It has a few little extras, like these little fins, and it's got a turret without a canopy. And this is like your basic troop transport sort of a deal, just larger capacity. This one, which is a more recent paint, this one's a fairly old repaint. Um, this one was, or both of these were, what you call glue bombs. 
basically somebody else had built both of these badly constructed and painted them and I got them cheap as a result. Unfortunately it does give you more work but if you're getting enjoyment from that it's not an issue. So this is the other base for that galleon which is a fire prism which is a heavy weapons tank. When you see them side by side you can see the you know the extra length on this one. It's kind of neat because these models are fairly modular they're not totally modular, but you can swap a lot of bits and pieces around between them to get different arrangements, weapon types, functionality, that sort of thing. And you can see on the front, like there's different antennas down here and, and that sort of thing. So they're kind of fun for that. This is for my main force. And this paint scheme is very simple. This, this is not how I'm doing the galleon. And it's obviously a different color scheme. So this is Craft World Eldar, which is sort of like your main good guys. The Harlequins are sort of, I suppose, chaotic lawful. If you if you're going to go down that route with it, they just they just do their thing. Um, they're not good guys or bad guys. They just do their thing. But the reason I like Harlequins is this. This is why I like Harlequins. They are colourful and flamboyant and a real opportunity to show off as a painter. I'm a bit old fashioned in my painting techniques. I've never really broken away from how I've been painting miniatures since the 90s. So I don't use a lot of high contrast details. I use a lot of more subtle shading and that's just how I prefer to paint. They tend to look better in person than they do on camera. This is one of the slightly newer ones, and I like to do some freehand details, and I do have a set hierarchy of colour schemes on the models. So the use of rainbow on this one is because of their position within the hierarchy. Rank and file, I just used three colours. Black, white, and red, nothing else. And then to individualize them, they all have different layouts for that. The Harlequin jet bike is probably one of the rarest miniatures I have. And I have several of these. This is the only one I've finished. You get an idea of the color scheme on this, the patterning. It's not very obvious at first, but it's one of those where the more you look, the more you see. There's also an interference medium, which I've played about with. I'm not entirely happy with it. I think there must be a better way of doing it. The idea was to give it sort of a, a beetle shell shine and iridescence. This one's a very early Eldar model and one of the first Harlequin versions. And you can see the, you know, the little details that I've put in there. Now, one of the things I am going to get to make viewing these a bit easier is I'm going to get one of those little turntable things. Because at the moment, as you can see, this is one of the reasons why I haven't been doing this stuff, is I don't have the right kind of setup just yet. So that will be coming up later, um, especially for things like the Galleon as I make progress on it. If there's enough interest, maybe I'll go through some of these in a bit more detail than I have. And then there's the matchbox restorations that I've done down here. You know, it's all part of the fun. We'll see how we go. So stick with me. I know this isn't the sort of video that you might have been expecting this week. And I might be a little bit delayed on new videos. Unfortunately, sometimes life gets in the way. But thank you if you've subscribed and you've hit the like button and left a comment. It helps me keep going with it. I mean, I'm sharing this stuff because hopefully you'll enjoy the content and you'll find it useful, but it can be a, a little bit tricky some weeks, especially when work's been a little bit heavy.